The National Australia Bank, the 21st largest bank in the world according to market cap. Today, we're gonna to do a home loan review. We're gonna look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's dive right in. Nathan Jaden here from Hunter Galloway Mortgage Brokers, your home for home buyers across Australia. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up or subscribe below, it'd mean a lot to us. The NAB is a really popular choice for a lot of home buyers and even investors out there all across Australia. You might have banked with them since you're this high, you might have only heard of them recently, it doesn't matter. And often they have some pretty good offers and options in terms of home loans. But is it good or are they gonna be bad for you? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. You're gonna find out if they're a good fit or maybe if you should go around and find another bank. So starting off with the three things that NAB do well. The first is that they're actually on the first home loan low deposit scheme. Effectively, that's where the government backs first home buyers with a minimal deposit to avoid mortgage insurance. Yeah, the government basically acts as your guarantor and the NAB and the Commonwealth Bank were one of only two major Australian banks that were shortlisted and can get access to the first home loan deposit scheme. So it's obviously pretty positive because if you bank with Westpac, Suncorp, a bunch of other banks, you can't actually get on the scheme. That's the positive. The negative is there's only 10,000 places allocated every financial year. We've got a whole video on this and at the moment, NAB's places have been allocated. So you have to go on a waiting list. But obviously a good thing if you can get on the waiting list and if you can jag a spot on the first home loan deposit scheme. The other positive about the first home loan low deposit scheme with NAB is you can actually buy properties in inner city locations with this scheme. Whereas ComBank, for example, have a blacklist even under the scheme you're unable to buy in those areas. So that's a huge thumbs up from now from what we see. Yeah, Nathan, so in other words, if you're looking at buying an apartment, say in inner city Brisbane or a high density area where otherwise NAB might want you to have a 20% deposit, if you're on the first home loan deposit scheme, you can put in as little as 5%. It's pretty loose. It's a bit of a niche that they've got at the moment, whether or not they're gonna sort of plug that gap in the future, don't know, check it out. If the policy does change, we'll let you guys know. The second thing that NAB do really well at is no pay slips, no worries. So Jaden, what does this look like? Yeah, Nate, so it's surprisingly common when we talk to people and they're just about to buy a home, but they're also just about to change jobs or they might not have quite started a job. And it's often the case if you're currently working and you're about to start a job in say two weeks time, a lot of banks will require you to have a pay slip from that job that you're gonna start in two weeks time before they'll approve your loan. This isn't the case with NAB. Like Nathan said, there's no pay slips, no worries. They'll let you use the new employment contract you've got on the job to check your income. As long as you've been in the same sort of role, the same sort of industry for a longer period, they'll let you just use that. They won't need to get the pay slip and you'll be off and running and get your loan approved way quicker. Now this is only for permanent part-time and full-time positions. Uh, the employment contract is all that's needed, which is super handy because a lot of times people find the property and haven't quite got their first pay slip from their new job. The only other caveat to this is you need to have a bigger deposit. So if you're a normal person like us, you need to have a 20% deposit. If you're a doctor, you can get away with a 10% deposit. So if you do have a lower deposit, you might need to wait for that pay slip to look at other bank options. So the third thing NAB do well at is maternity leave. So Jaden, walk us through what this looks like. Yeah, so typically, if you're on maternity leave, you might not get pay slips from your work, or you might be on a reduced pay, or you could be getting the government schemes. All in all, it means that while my wife might be off work at the moment on maternity leave, she might've been earning $50,000 say before she left. While you're on the government schemes, the income might be down at $10,000. And most banks will only use your income at the time, which would be $10,000. Not in the case of NAB. NAB will actually say, that's all right, we'll use your income that you're getting when you're full-time with work, as long as you're gonna return back to work. So they'll use the $50,000 from her job before she went on maternity leave, even while you're on maternity leave and you're applying for a home loan. Now the benefit here of this policy is that you don't actually have to wait till you go back to work to be able to purchase the property. The caveat here is that you do need to show that you have some savings left over once you make the purchase that will cover you from now until when you go back to work. And the bonus tip here for NAB and what we think they do really well at is Medicos. They're great with Medicos and waiving mortgage insurance at 90%. Yeah, so this actually includes not just doctors and surgeons and that stuff, but also vets, so veterinarians and optometrists, which is a bit of an odd one, but you are covered. So if you're a vet, you're an optometrist, and you've got a 10% deposit and don't feel like paying lenders mortgage insurance, then NAB could be the right place for you. So Jaden, we've looked at the three things NAB do really well out. Now we're gonna look at the things they don't do so well out. So high loan to value ratio or minimal deposit, 
they're actually not so good at, Jane. So walk me through this. So NAB aren't good with low deposits for two reasons. The first reason is that they won't give you extra loan discounts. So when we've covered other times, other reviews like Westpac and St. George, they're happy to give you a high discount. So a good cheap rate if you have a low deposit. Um, they don't see you as higher risk. NAB on the other hand, say you've got a lower deposit, you're higher risk, we're gonna charge you a higher rate. So it's not great. The other thing is they're pretty harsh with their internal scorecard. So in the background, the computer has a system, an algorithm that looks at all your stuff. And basically, if you have a lower deposit, you're seeing as a higher risk and the bank's probably gonna be a lot more critical in your application when you're going through that process. The other thing on top of this is if you're looking for a construction loan, they'll only let you lend up to 90% of the property value for a construction. So once again, not being great when you've got a minimal deposit for construction. Yeah, so the sting with that as well, it's gotta be 90%, including a lender's mortgage insurance. So for example, if you're borrowing 88%, usually the lender's mortgage insurance can be up to 2%. So you've gotta have like a 12% deposit if you're building with NAB. So if you don't have that, which is pretty common at the moment because you're getting different grants and your home build and all that fun stuff, NAB might not be the place for you. The second thing NAB aren't so great at is they have a postcode register. So Jaden, walk me through this one here. Yeah, so in other words, if you're buying in what the bank considers a high density area, typically there's an inner city, these are places where there's lots of apartments around, they consider them a bit higher risk because they say, well, there's a lot of people in a short area, in you know, a very concentrated area, and if something were to go wrong in the property market, the bank's gonna be exposed. So in other words, in these areas in Brisbane, it might be Brisbane CBD or West End, Sydney, it might be roads. Think of, you know, places like that in Victoria, et cetera, et cetera. The banks will generally, well NAB in their case, will want you to have about a 20% deposit. So it really rules out a lot of first home buyers that are looking at buying an apartment in one of these high density areas, because it just means, well, how many people have a 20% deposit? Not that many when you're looking at buying your first home. The third thing NAB aren't great at is valuations. Yeah, so one thing we've noticed lately, and it could be because of COVID, or it could also be because of cost cutting, NAB have really wound back the amount of physical valuations they get. So typically, if you're buying your first home, you're buying a place, the bank will send a third party valuer out to the property to inspect it. And they'll go look at it, make sure that the right amount of bedrooms are there, and it's all good. In NAB's case, They've stopped doing that even with lower deposits and typically they're reverting to what's called a curbside valuation where someone literally just does a drive by and says, yep, house is there, it's all good. Or a desktop valuation where the valuer just sits on their computer and says, yep, Nathan, I think your place is worth, I don't know, 500 grand. Now the challenge with this is with other banks, we find that the curbside and the desktop valuations can be more conservative. So they can come in lower even if you're doing a purchase. And with other banks, there's usually a bit of a process. So if the curbside comes in short, you can say, hey, it's a curbside, it's short, here's some other sales. Can we get a full valuation and get someone to inspect the property? Sounds easy enough, right? Not with NAB. NAB's process to overrule the valuation is pretty challenging. In our experience, once they've got a drive-by valuation, they're not gonna go against it. And they're just gonna say, well, we think the property's worth this much and that's it. And I had this problem a couple of weeks ago. A client of mine was purchasing an apartment on the coast and they'd paid 470,000. We got the NAB drive-by valuation and it came in at 460,000. It was short and they just wouldn't overturn it. We had to end up going to another bank. It was a real pain. And it's something to be aware of that if you get a bad valuation up front, it could affect you down the back end. Now the last bonus tip for NAB and what they don't do well at is guarantor loans. They actually withdrew their guarantor loans recently and no longer offer this to customers. Yeah, so if you're looking for a guarantor loan, even if you're an existing NAB customer, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. They're just not gonna do it. They're flat out refusing at the moment. It just is what it is. There are other banks and other providers. Check out our Westpac review video, or even our St. George one. They're another provider that does it quite well. Um, and if you do need help, make sure you hit us up. So that's it for today, guys. Did you know at Hunter Galloway, we help home buyers around Australia with securing finance solutions? Feel free to hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au. And as always, thanks for watching.